Like I said, I'm very hard to annoy and I'm very hard to scare off. Sure, sure. All righty. I love this meme. Um, and I'm just going to start by reading it and then I'm going to read the explanation that comes with it from 404 today. Uh, spiritual discernment. Discernment is the spiritual ability to hear the hiss of the serpent. Uh, and, of, and, I, and I do think that it is also important that we be able to recognize it for what it is. And I think, and as we go through the scriptures, as we go through the explanation, I think that's going to be made clear. Uh, discernment is seeing the difference between truth and error. It is the ability to think biblically. Discernment is the faculty of discerning, discrimination, acuteness of judgment, and understanding. Scriptural discernment is to examine, prove, test, and scrutinize. It's to be a Berean. It's not what seems right, but what measures up to the word, not anything else. Beloved, do, okay, 1 John 4, 1. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. For many false prophets have gone out into the world. Hebrews 5, 14, but solid food is for the mature, for those who have their powers of discernment, trained by constant practice to distinguish good from evil. Philippians 1, 9 through 10, and it is my prayer that your love may abound more and more with knowledge and all discernment, so that you may approve what is excellent and so be pure and blameless for the day of Christ. And 1 Thessalonians 5, 20, uh, 21 through 22. But examine everything carefully. Hold fast to that which is good. Abstain from every form of evil. That is, uh, uh, so this is what I believe to be one of the best definitions of discernment, especially given the uh, scriptural proofs for it. Since the scriptures come, uh, since the scriptures come of spirit, come of the spirit, if we wish to be able to develop our spiritual gift of discernment, we must learn to think like the scriptures rather than make the scriptures conform to what we think. And so this is, and so, th and so I love this. I shared it. I may share it again 5,000 times. <laughs> well, I um, shared it because uh, we're looking at my Facebook wall right now. Right. Anyways, uh, I may share it again 5,000 times. Um, People wow. need to know that what it is, what it means to actually be discerning. Well, right. So it, if we could take a look into the... Uh, Sure, sure, sure. It. Let's go look at the dictionary. But one, one thing that I find, I, I like the picture. I think they picked a really good picture and just the little subtitle to the picture quite a bit. Mm -hmm. um, spiritual discernment, discernment, the spiritual ability to hear the hiss of the serpent. Now, mm -hmm. I, the serpent in the garden, right? Which I actually, I, here's one thing I think a lot of people get wrong. They think because the Bible says there was a snake in the garden, it has to be literal. No. Snakes is a Hebrew idiom for enemies. Mm -hmm. There was an enemy, enemy in, the garden. in the garden. And those who are familiar with the imagery know that. Because you'll see mostly Christian videos trying to, they don't know if to make it a human <laughs> like or an angel or whatnot or a snake or a, yeah, because or they a, use the or... word snake right no it's just an yeah. idiom for enemy <laughs> that's all it is it's just well uh, it's it's again it's symbology yeah it, and, and that account i do believe it's based off of history but the way it is written it is completely <laughs> symbolic to teach well, uh, I the believe that, that there, we go through, but anyways, I believe that there are to the creation. I believe that there are both historical and allegorical aspects of the narrative of the creation narrative that comes to us in the Bible, in the Bible. Yeah, I, I think that. that there are things that God wants us to know that are beyond just, well, this happened. Well, um, right, right. And, and throughout the Book of Mormon, just on this point, it states that Adam and Eve are first parents. 
so it 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 is completely literal because I know there's theories out there that there's multiple Adam and Eves. No, the the book or that Mormon Adam had, had or that Adam had more than one wife, which well, is not scriptural. Yeah, you know, that that's from the occult. Um, in fact, yeah. on that point, that's where Lilith comes from in the chosen yep. of that yep. those occult traditions. And so, yep. uh, mm -hmm. sadly, he's putting I and it's and this seems to be a common theme. They'll do it less in the beginning, and then they start put more in as they get you uh, hooked. And I'm seeing that mm -hmm. in the chosen, which is kind of sad. But anyways, that's another subject. But I, I like this picture because the um, the snake stung out. Um, yep. And that is uh, a thing of Satan, a sign of Satan with the tongue out. I'll get you the verse in just a minute because I don't have it memorized. I think it's Isaiah, the one that I may have, but I can get it. Um, and it's to mock God. And mm -hmm. you'll see celebrities today doing that. Um, yeah. The, and and yeah, the whole I, for those who stayed a little bit longer yesterday for a little more fellowship stuff, remember how I brought the cat and that sign? Yep. Which yep. the cat yep. has to do with Satan also. But anyways, but that's how he gets the hairball is getting that sign out. Yeah, by licking it. By, by, by licking it. And taking the hair. And, and, and the yep. hair taking it away from other people. Even. But anyways, I, I'm getting sidetracked. Oh. Um, so what's up? What's up with that person's comment? Like, oh, I don't know. It's not on my wall. They're... It's on their wall. I, 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 I don't understand that. Well, so in the New Testament, yeah, I, say I saw that, and I was spirit, like, but uh, okay. can, you know, we should worship Yahweh and or Elohim and in, in spirit and truth. I, Yahweh is the incarnate Yahshua, and so. I, I don't understand why they're bringing that come up with here. So I, I don't know. And I don't want yeah, to. Yeah, well, it. they, it's because, well, it's a lot of people. Um, when comments are people's reaction to the content, period, oh, end I, of story. And therefore, it's just somebody's reaction. It's a human reaction. Yeah, but I, I, I actually, I don't understand how that relates even to what's there. But anyways, I, I don't want yeah, to. Yeah, well, you, 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 have, you have a point that seems <laughs> relatively uh, unrelated. Yeah, I, <laughs> I, I, I will, I'll, I'll be honest. In general, I like this, uh, this Facebook page, Torah for today. But I, probably the posts that I comment on the most are the ones when they have to do with the Sabbath. Um, because I believe differently on that, and that's another subject. Um, but anyways, right. Right. well, um, and the, and, and, well, and the vast majority of comments <laughs> that you're going to find on Facebook are comments that disagree with um, the yeah uh, with the with the idea of being positive. So well, that, I don't want to get into being Facebook. what being positive. Oh, oh being oh, presented okay. right, um, <laughs> and, and Facebook kind of engineers things to do that way but anyway that's another that's another yes, squirrel yes, actually yes. i don't want to get into i'm on there yep that's yep, a squirrel nope. that's a squirrel that's a, that's bye bye squirrel, squirrel. Hey, um, squirrel. but then look at this oh, look how he, this snake right here from i i'm no snake expert but look how he's coiled up right he's ready, ready to, to strike he strikes and the ones and, and from my general knowledge of snakes the ones that curl up are the poisonous ones yes right? now mm -hmm. that reminds me of the incident in torah which i don't remember it is but when yahweh took yes. away the protection from the israelites when they were complaining the the snakes yeah. were already there and they mm -hmm. then because they were complaining yahweh's like okay i'm going to take away my protection and these snakes bit them with their poisonous venom okay and yep. it made them sick and that's when the cross came in which you know john three sixteen is based off of but it's interesting this poisonous venom comes from their mouth just like the evil words that come from satan and his followers right that is the that is their power their power is in their words and that's their, and the their only words. power they have is their words because even when they're they bind you with getting you to do sin now still all the power they have is their words because yep. even to the grossest sinner if they will repent 
Yahweh will accept them back if they will repent with their broken heart and contrite spirit. Yeah, Satan's because his arms are over. always outstretched. Yeah. His arms are always outstretched. Yes. Amen. Yes, Amen. Amen. Um, in fact, interesting, from Torah, um, when Moses was in the lake just before the Hebrew mother got him, the, I, I mean, the Egyptian uh, mother got him. In, in Torah, it's described her arm stretched out to get him, bringing out mm -hmm. the imagery of Yahweh's arms are, is always stretched out. Um, but anyway. Right. Um, mm -hmm. But Inter it's, it's interesting imagery. Yeah, but this picture right here is quite revealing if one actually looks at it and um, brings out what's going on with it, with, right? Well, I, like, I also like the, the usage of, of, of light and darkness within the picture itself. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's right? true. I didn't notice that one. Yeah. Because, because it, it, sometimes, it, it, sometimes there's varying, there's always varying shades of gray. Yeah. when you're speaking with someone who is a deceiver it's mm -hmm. always varying shades of gray but with the torah and the law and the gospel it is always you will always by the spirit which is the word no it will be clear oh well, yeah it, there's one shade <laughs> there's, <laughs> yeah right? there's only but one shade actually to go a little more off of what you brought out there josh Look, it's yep. the facing, the front face. What you see and focus on first has the light, like the angel, like the fallen mm -hmm. angels will appear as an angel of light. But then when you get to the yep. body, it's dark, right? And I, you can oh. see that in the picture. Yep. And that is very telling what really goes on with his mm -hmm. techniques. And I don't you know. Look nice, I, but then when you actually get into it, aka the body, it's very dark. But I don't, yep. and I don't know how significant this is, but this is a crate, one of the most poisonous of all snakes. Oh, so, I know that. But I, and yes. that might have been Percival because that's uh, Satan, right? <laughs> Anyways, yeah. The most poisonous what, snake the, the, that, no, he is the most poisonous. He is the most poisonous. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. that, so that's just another thing to another thing to. Uh, and just, yeah. just I, I just I, I, I noticed that the, their use of light and dark in the picture as well that that, that stood out to me uh, yeah, well, and, and when yeah, you brought it out you know, it, it, it was like oh wow look at that because that 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 um, the light on the face makes you focus on the face and it kind of draws you in and then when the serpent has been able to encircle you about with the coils of its body that you don't see because it's too dark mm -hmm. and then you're wrapped up in the chains of the adversary and so, his lies but along with this but on a different type of snake like the bow constrictor okay this is interesting mm -hmm. what does he do to kill you he squeezes the air out of you mm -hmm. and what is the air it is the spirit tor the law and right. when we break that we are dead yeah it's just interesting. Yeah, we, Anyways, yeah, it's just going. But pretty, I, I think it's there's pretty good stuff uh, right there. Yeah, I, I. So I, I'm, I'm happy to learn that my educated guess on the coiling was correct. <laughs> Being poisonous, as uh, Matt, uh, I mean Ben confirmed. But anyway, so we should go to the dictionary though and go look at the word discernment, right? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Oops. <clears throat> uh, actually, yeah. Let's go. Let me pick a window. Yeah. Hmm. Um, it might be better there halfway, especially for those who might be on a phone. I, I don't know. Anyways, um, I, I really like this dictionary. <laughs> <laughs> the 1828 version. Yeah. Uh, you want to read it? Okay, the act of discerning, also the power or faculty of the mind by which distinguishes one thing from another. Ah, as look at truth. That. I, I'm just I'm going to highlight a couple of things of the mind distinguishes one from another, aka good from evil, righteousness from wickedness. Right? Okay. As truth from falsehood, oh. virtue from vice. 
It's yeah. right there. Oh, I, I guess I should have just thought I should have butted it. I shouldn't have butted in, huh? <laughs> well, maybe not. Maybe maybe if you just let me read, it would have come. Yeah. Uh, acuteness of judgment, power of perceiving differences of things or ideas and their relations and tendencies. The errors of youth often proceed from the want of discernment. That, uh, using that definition in a. Um, uh, so now. In attendance. We're going to go look at a Moroni 7 verse, okay? And I'm just bringing it out okay. here because it's around some other stuff, how um, the law tells us how to know what's right and wrong. Because in Moroni 7, it states it's easy to know right from wrong. You go ask a Christian, mm -hmm. they don't know how to do that. You go ask a right. lot of these offshoots, they don't know how to do that. The Book of Mormon brings out, it is the Torah that makes it easy to discern right from wrong, okay? And I, I bring that out here, so that's why I'm just going to bring it out here to make it a little, my life a little easier. Mm. Yeah. Um, there we are. Well, is it this one or the another one? Because there's... Uh, uh, no, it's not this one. That one's about the tongue of angels. Um, not that one. Uh, so here we go. This is the one I want. So we could maybe start up here a little bit. Uh, we probably don't okay. need to read all the verses that go along with it. <laughs> Sometimes I put maybe a little too many, but anyways, I'll, we'll just start mm -hmm. here. This is probably a good place to start. Um, just after, just as after we have received the Holy Spirit. Or ghost, law, Torah, we can speak with the tongue of angels. So shall those who desire to teach of Yahweh, of Yahweh's ways, should wait until they after have learned after they have learned of his paths and have kept them themselves, such that they know of Yeshua, Jesus' true points of doctrine and law. Torah, such that they can actually teach of Yahweh's instructions to help others come to the Messiah. It is interesting to note that in Doctrine and Covenants. Um, LDS 1121. Uh, 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 tongue. And I, added this, angels. and I added of angels is used to describe teaching of Yahweh's ways as it is used. Okay, 1121. Okay, yeah, well, that's not then shall your tongue be loose. No, I mean, we can use it because it, it's, yeah, yeah, so that's right. Tongue of angels. That's what I was going at, but that's not what I want right now. I mean, we, I'm happy to read all that if you guys want, but. Um, oh, here we go. This is the spot we should start. Sorry, guys. Light, uh, light is an image for the law, Torah, and scriptures because with it we can see where to walk in this dark and dreary world. Psalm 119, 105. Thy, Yahweh's word, is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Proverbs 6.23. For the commandment is a lamp and the law, Hebrew Torah, is light. And reproofs of, of instruction are the way of life. Proverbs 4, 18 through 19. But the path, Torah, of the just is the shining light that shineth more and more onto the perfect or judgment day. The way of the wicked is darkness. And they know not at what they stumble. Isaiah, Isaiah 8, 20. To the law, Hebrew, Torah, yeah, when we take that word back to its Hebrew, it means Torah. Yeah, we'll, we'll and to the testimony. Hold on, let's just sidetrack a that. little bit to show that. Strongest concordance, Torah, Torah. direction. Look at that. That's actually how you say that word, Torah. But anyways, okay. Torah, yeah. And to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. Mm -hmm. This according mm -hmm. to the words of Isaiah. Doctrine and Covenants, section 84, verse 45. For the word of the Lord, Yahweh, is truth. And whatsoever is truth is light. And whatsoever is light is holy, is spirit. With the words, Do I have holy. too many uh, glyphs? Yeah, too many things added there. Doctor. It's hard for me to read. Um, is spirit. And what I tell is, so even this, Yeshua the Messiah, 
Uh, Even the spirit of Yeshua. Yeah. You, I can read okay. Knowing that light is another word for law, Torah, as these uh, verses from uh, oh. the Tanakh, mm -hmm. aka the Old Testament, and even the Doctrine and Covenants. The doctrine and Covenants, and some people's favorite one, Isaiah, because there, there's a there, there's a, a you know a movement of Isaiah people right now, right? So right mm -hmm. there is saying yeah. Isaiah states the law, Torah, is light. Okay. Knowing that light is another word for Torah, Moroni 7, 18 to 19 becomes so clear to understand because it's telling, oops, I forgot us, to make judgments by the written law Torah. Ben, you didn't proofread enough. I missed that. I missed, that, missed that one. That one. Right. Yeah. Of course, I missed it too because I wrote it, but you, 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 yeah. you helped me proofread it a lot of it. But anyways, uh, Moroni 7, 18 to 19. And now, my brethren, see that ye know the light, the law, Torah, yeah. by which you should judge. Um, and so we just went up here how imagery, light, is the law, which is Torah. Yes. And so it's, it's I think, it's pretty easy to, to justify putting that there, okay? Which light is the light of or from? And I, I we can go look at of, and it does mean from. Oh, look, first definition. From or out of, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, so from the Messiah. And what comes from the Messiah? His word, which is the law, right? Which is light. Which is light. Yeah, we just got over that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. See that you do not judge wrongfully. For that same judgment which you judge, you shall also be judged. So this has a two-sided mm -hmm. sword. Not judging is actually judgment of allowing evil to be good it's allowance just, just so people are aware there and you shall also be judged wherefore mm -hmm. i beseech of you brother that you should search diligently in the light of the messiah that you may know good from evil oh look at this a eh? so i love chiasms uh, the more you'll <laughs> spend time with me the more you'll see that but look light is an a Knowledge from good and evil is A, and light stands for the law, Torah. That's how we're supposed to know good from evil, by the Torah. Mm -hmm. That's why it's easy, because it's actually written. It's written down hmm. that you may know good from evil. And if you will lay hold upon every good thing, the law, and condemn it not, the law, <laughs> aka condemning the law, is condemning the Holy Ghost. Right. And ye certainly will be a child follower of the Messiah. So in here, in fact, this is the first time I've noticed this one. That's actually still, this is also right here, teaching the sin of, you know, denying the Holy Ghost right there. I hadn't noticed that one before. Mm -hmm. Anyways, mm -hmm. I'm still learning too. <laughs> uh, we are to make judgments mm -hmm. by the Torah. In the beginning of bishops or Israel, I talk about how judges, are, okay, so now I'm going... See, look no, at this. It, we could do this. That the the bishops, these judges, are not supposed to judge by the whims of their fleeting hearts. It's by the law. They're well, they're not. Yeah, they're not judged judge by the whims it's, of somebody. It's not uh, to, across the country <clears throat> either. But anyways, whatever. Yeah, yeah. It's not supposed <laughs> to be judging on a hunch. Right, right, and, and that's where you know I have two wit actual <laughs> witnesses who observed what happened. Not just witnesses that are your buddies. Witnesses that actually observed what happened. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, we yeah. could look at the definition witness, but I, I, we're sidetracking more and more. So, I, anyway. Yeah, that's a squirrel. That's a different squirrel. Yeah, yeah. That's a different squirrel. But just to go back to the discernment, Moroni seven teaches it, and then it's by the law, mm -hmm. Torah. Right. Once you understand the imagery that's there, All right? Very interesting. And it's interesting going back to the imagery of the snake. Satan mm -hmm. will will Thank come you. as an angel of light. As in that, when we keep our own law, we are a law unto ourselves. Satan is a law unto himself, and the law is light. Mm -hmm. That's so he will appear, and so so he can make his thing, so he can make his lawlessness appear as law, right? And that's why 
and I'm, I'm just trying to bring out that's partly why he can appear as an angel of light because he's bringing his own law which is i mean his is really 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 dim i, I don't know if i said that enough but you get the point right 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 um but also in the dnc it states I, i'm pretty sure probably 88 <laughs> that you will become a law unto yourself, your own law, right? And so well, I'm just yes, trying to connect is, these things like, to build this concept more. Pull, uh, pull, up, pull up Doctrine and Covenant section 88, and I'll, and I'll read okay. those verses for you. Now you probably know exactly which verse, too. <laughs> yeah, I know exactly where I'm going. <laughs> He's like, well, I've only, <laughs> I've only done a little research. Uh, yeah. <laughs> hey, wait, I only I live, I like, only I know live that here. One by heart. <laughs> yeah, we live here. No, honestly, yeah, you got really honestly, excited I there, still don't, I'm not gonna lie. Honestly, you you jumped right up, man. <laughs> honestly, I still don't I still don't have it memorized. I'm working on that. Ah. <laughs> well, that's um that's okay. I'm not too yeah. surprised you're actually working on memorizing it. But anyways, okay, yeah. what, what verse? <laughs> okay. It's a we'll start in verse 34 again. And again, barely, oh, it, sorry. because this, this is the key. This is the crux. This tells us, uh, th this tells us, um, this tells us by what we are sanctified and mm. how we are not. And again, barely, I say unto you, that which is governed by law is also preserved by law and perfected and sanctified by the same. And that which breaketh the law and, ab and abideth not by law, but seeketh to become a law unto itself and willeth to abide in sin. This willeth to abide in sin is connected to becoming a law unto yourself. Willeth to abide in sin and altogether abideth in sin cannot be sanctified by law, neither by mercy, justice, nor judgment. Therefore, they must remain filthy still. Yeah, there it is. And it's in Ooh. the modern stuff too. Like modern, modern, not just yeah. not just the old stuff. I wonder if that means yeah. it's the same from beginning to the end. Well, actually, we can go to John chapter one, the uh the, the sure, Joseph sure. Smith translation, John chapter one. Well, I, I'm gonna bring up the one it. we did. I, I was yes. just more being facetious, but since you <laughs> want to do that one, I'll We'll bring up the poking the embers. Together. That's what you were doing, Stephen. I know what you were doing. You were poking the embers. <laughs> he's, poking the, I, he's poking the bear. He's poking I, the I bear. I never do that. What are you talking about? <laughs> Fire. I, okay. I, well, when I'm being facetious, it's not actually lying, just FYI. <laughs> anyway, yeah, that's yeah. just joking. It's, it's, it's called joking. being facetious. And I'm being facetious too. I okay. know you are. So let us begin. Let us begin at the beginning of the testimony of John the Baptist. In the beginning was the gospel preached through the Son, and the gospel was the word Torah, and the word Torah was with the Son, and the Son was with God, Elohim, and the Son was of God, Elohim. This is the Joseph Smith translation. The same was in the beginning with God, Elohim. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made which was made. In him was the gospel, and the gospel was the light. And the life was the light of men, and the light shineth in the world, and the world perceiveth it not. Sorry. Then was a man, John, sent from God Elohim, whose, whose name was John. The same John came into the world for a witness, to bear witness of the light, to bear record of the gospel through the Son, unto all that through him John, men might believe. He was not that light, but came to bear witness of that light, which is the true light, which giveth, which lighteth every man who cometh into the world, even the Son of God. He who was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, 
Israel, and his own Israel received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God Elohim. Only to them who believe on his name, authority, and character. Oh, I didn't put a link to the dictionary. I'll have to update that. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, that's a uh, yeah. Did anyway. Sue have something she was trying to say? Yeah. Yeah, go ahead, Sue. Sorry. Okay. So it, maybe it's just a matter of he's jumping in time periods. Um, but he's first he's talking about in the beginning, as though he's talking about in the beginning of the world. Yep, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, that's exactly. And he talks what about he's... Torah, Torah being there in the beginning, and then all of a sudden he jumps to John, which was quite a ways from the beginning of the world. <laughs> Yeah, that's a huge time jump, yes. Right, right. But I think yeah. the, the main point he's doing is tying who was in the beginning to who John is testifying of. That's what he's doing. Yeah. All right. Does that make sense? Right, okay. And so yeah. the, the main point is John, he's in a very important side note here. Uh, and <laughs> especially when this was written, it was a very important side note, as in that he he's the one, he was the mighty one of that time he's the one that prepared the way for um oh the mighty one prepares the way i yeah. thought there were th different steps there, there was a well, preparer well, yeah, and then well, a mighty one and then so john the baptist there is john the baptist is the mighty one he's the one <laughs> yeah. that sets the path straight right um, the preparer so the mighty the, one. right well he's not the so i believe the preparer in this instance is the righteous one that's talked about in the Dead Sea Scrolls. And this is a sidetrack. John, when I was reading the Dead Sea Scrolls, it's been a long time now. I mean, it was like, oh my goodness. Um, 40 years ago when I was reading the Dead Sea Scrolls. But anyway. Well, you're ahead of my um, time. I, I, I'm, I'm only 43. Yeah, I'm an so. old woman. Yeah. Um, yeah, you've yeah. still got little kids. I've, I've got great grandkids. Um, yeah. Anyway. Um, I wondered very often if that teacher that they were talking about wasn't Christ. Oh, it wasn't. It was the preparer. He, the, um, the preparer, the righteous one, was the Joseph Smith of their day. John is the it? mighty one. The the righteous and then teacher. Came the Messiah. And then came the Messiah. Well, how come the rest of the society didn't know about the the righteous one? Well, or didn't the, tell he was the preparer. It. So the, the, the teacher, the righteous teacher that's talked about in the Dead Sea Scrolls, I think I remember the term right. He um, kind of got things ready for John the Baptist. John the Baptist was an Essene, which is that Dead Sea community. He, he grew up there. That's who he learned from. I don't know. On is that timing. in the Dead Sea Scrolls? Does it talk about John in the Dead Sea Scrolls? Uh, not specifically. Um, let me see no. if I can find a book for you that actually does this. Hold on. Um, I. But, yeah, but that is a but that's a pretty cool connection to make, right? Yeah, but it, so <laughs> John the Baptist was the mighty one of his day. I, I mean, they use the other term Elias. <laughs> Right, or Elijah, I think it's the Elias. I, I always get those true Elias. 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 This is Elias why I like the common. mighty one term more because it's easier for me to say, <laughs> but it's the same thing. Okay. Um, he is of that of that day where we're waiting for that one to, to, to set the past right be, straight before the second coming because that same pattern needs to happen again. Um, We had a preparer. Well, the preparer is Joseph Smith. Right. Oh, you're talking mighty one. We're waiting for the mighty one. Mm hmm Okay. Yep, yep. Who prepares the way who prepares the, the way, way for, for the Messiah? Gotcha, gotcha. Oh, it's just spelled oh, Baptist. Reed Smoot, I haven't seen it. Oh, so the Reed Smoot is the one uh, hearing that's famous for 
polygamy arguments, right? Mm -hmm. I, I haven't listened to it yet, but I, I do. I have, it's on my to-do list, as you can see. Um, so what is this you're going down? If you have, uh, these are my books I own list? on Audible. Oh, okay. and, and, and so I'm trying to find the Dead Sea Audible book that talks about John and um, that talks about how the uh, John learned from the Essenes and it brings out patterns on that. Um, it may be this one, maybe this one. I, I'm not 100% sure. What, uh, let's see if maybe. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't care about the author name. I want to search the description, mm -hmm. not the. Uh, or author name. No, so. I'll, I'll I'll give you this link. Um. I. I'm iffy if this is, one is not it. Um, but. We're sidetracking a little too much. I can try to do some more looking later, if that's okay. Um, but there, yeah, there that's, that's is an audio book I have that talks about the Dead Sea and John the Baptist, and this one might be it. Um, and it brings out how it, John learned from that community. I don't know the timing if he was alive at the same time as the teacher, um, but I and they didn't hmm. they didn't call him the you know. The patterns that I am, I'm just bringing out a pattern that I'm seeing in addition to it, you know, the pattern of the three. But anyways, um, I think we can probably go back to what we were actually trying to do, unless you want a little more on that, Sue. No, that's fine. Okay. Um, but I, I gave you the link. I think that's it. And we can talk more about it later. Um, maybe when just at, during mm -hmm. where we take our little break for sacrament. But anyways. Well, my bedtime is 10, so. Oh, how much sure. time do you have right now then? An hour and, uh, okay. and four minutes. Well, let's get, sac let's get Sacramento underway. Yeah, yeah, so let's pause then. Um, I got to hit the right pause. Cool. So, in the Book of Mormon, in, 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 and in Torah, <laughs> Just before Moses did the miracle of parting the Red Sea, you know what he said? Or at least something close to it anyways? Behold, the salvation of Yahweh. Mm -hmm. Wow. <coughs> he literally saved them by taking them through the, sea, the water, the deep sea, which sadly we complain about because the deep <laughs> sea is symbolism of the chaos that we live through. But side note of that, the mighty one who is coming, whatever he's doing, it will make it so they stop talking about Moses, if one can believe that. Well, I do, because the scriptures say it, but it's still hard to believe, right? And, I mean, yeah, yeah, because Moses is that guy. Yeah, he's the guy he's, that... He's that guy. <laughs> pretty much everybody talks about it. In fact, even to the point, Yeshua put a really big focus on him, right? Let me... Let me... Mm -hmm. Let me share. I, I don't. I don't. I, I don't. I don't. Hey, have, hang on just a sec. I'm just going to grab my scriptures real quick. I, sorry about that. Okay. Or, I'm sorry. No, that, that's fine. Go ahead. Um, so maybe I'll pause for just a minute while you're. Oh, no worries. No worries. So, um, is it this one? No. Uh, I can find it in my notes. Sorry, guys. This one. That's the one. Okay. 
Joshua made Jesus made such a big deal about Moses. Here's what he said. For had you believed Moses, you would have believed me, for he wrote of me. But if you believe not his writings, aka Torah, how shall you believe my words? Now, this is re-emphasized in the Book of Mormon, okay? First Nephi 19.23 I did read many things unto them, Lamin and Lemuel, which were written, written in the Book of Moses's, or, Mo, sorry, Moses. Books of Moses. But that I might more fully persuade them to believe the Yahweh, their Redeemer. I did read unto them that which was written by the prophet of Isaiah, for I did liken all scriptures unto us, that it might be for our profit and learning. <laughs> Nephi and Yeshua <laughs> found the writings of Moses to point them to the Messiah. If you're rejecting Torah, you're rejecting the Messiah. Yeah. The Messiah is the perfect personification of the Torah. The law tells us who he is. If you don't believe Moses, you will not believe Yeshua's words. Period. Or you will believe a skewed version of his words. Which is the Antichrist. The version of Jesus that gets taught in Christianity is the Antichrist. Go... The book of Revelation talks about when he comes, or actually just before he comes, Satan will be reviling against those who keep his law. And Christianity, and actually Judaism, actually, but in, in a different way, teaches us to not keep the law. <coughs> but yet, in Revelations, just before the second coming, Satan is reviling against those who keep the law and the testimony of Yeshua. Both. And, the, and, uh, and our victory is found in faithfulness even unto death. Not loving our own lives more than we love the testimony of Jesus. And, where, and, that, and that testimony of Jesus can be found... It, read, read, Deut read the song of Moses in Deuteronomy. You yeah. will not find, you will not find a stronger testimony of Jesus. And that's the last part of Deuteronomy for those who don't know. I don't remember the exact chapter, but it is the last part of Deuteronomy. But, anyways, yeah, that song was to help people know who the Messiah is. Because Moses knew they would reject him. And he was trying to at least get to a remnant to get them to see him when he came. And will come in our time. Yes. Um, in this generation, it's been three and four generations since the starting of the restoration. The time is near. I don't know exactly when. The time is near. Yes. I said near, not soon. Because soon's an interesting word. But anyway, sorry. <laughs> it's just, to, just to throw a little joke in there. <laughs> lighten the a little bit. Um, <laughs> it is near, not soon. <laughs> Um, if you don't believe the words of Moses, you don't believe the words of your Messiah. 
if you don't agree on earthly things with the Messiah, how in the hell are you going to agree with heavenly things with the Messiah? I'm being blunt, but it is true. If you can't agree how to do heavenly things down here on earth, how are you going to agree with the Messiah to do heavenly things in heaven? You're not. You <coughs> simply will not. And the Messiah is who gave the Torah. The, the Messiah is Yahweh Elohim. In fact, let's take the Book of Mormon for his word. And so, 3 Nephi 19, 18. Behold, they began to pray, and they did pray unto Yeshua, calling him their Yahweh, their Elohim. He is our God. Period. 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 Um, title page. The title page is about the purposes of the Book of Mormon. Okay, and There's multiple purposes, but here's the one that goes along with what I'm stating here. And also the convincing of the Jew and the Gentile. We all here grew up as Gentiles, correct? If not, I mean, we can bring it from the DNC if you want. But anyways, that Yeshua is the Messiah, the eternal Elohim, manifesting himself unto all nations. That is from the title page of the Book of Mormon from the gold plates. Moroni wrote that. Moroni knew what he was stating. He knew <laughs> what he was stating. He is my God, my Elohim, my judge. And I will listen to him over anybody else. AKA the first commandment, no judge before me. He is Amen. the top judge. There are others who can be above us as he set forth judges. But there is none above him. He is the top priority. N numero uno. Anyways, sorry. I'll stop now. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to pause. If you're willing to. So um, yeah, which one do you want first? Which verse? Let's... Um... Let's go to Genesis chapter one. No, oh, that yeah. one. Yeah. Oh, okay. I know where you're going. I don't have that one in my notes. So we'll go somewhere else. Um, but I, I know where you're going at. <laughs> uh, actually, I'm going to go Bible Hub. For this <laughs> one, right? Because that's where yep. I taught it to you from. Well, I'm going. Yeah, I'm going to 114. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. So actually, I'm going to go somewhere else then. So you're going a little different than I was thinking, but that's fine. Yeah, I, I the first the, the I, first I, thing that we need the first thing that we need to establish. Let's go this one. Yes. Okay. There we go. All righty. So and God, Elohim said, "Let there be lights, sun and moon, in the firmament of heaven, to divide the day from the night." And let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. Now that word seasons, when you go into when you get when you take it down to the Hebrew, the word is actually moedim. Uh, 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 I'm just going to be extra thorough. I'm going to go Genesis 1:14, and we'll click it from there. Yep. Moedim. Moedim. Moedim is He's the Hebrew for it. Moedim. Um, yeah, so, so sorry. look right here. I, I'm going to click on it. You can open a tab. Moed, yeah, say Moedim. 
Okay. That appointed time, a place for meeting. So seasons is actually appointed times. What comes to us as seasons is actually appointed times. If Which you go I, I'm back, I'm just going to interject it here a little bit. Uh, Lux, I'm articles of faith. I forget which number. We believe in the Bible as far as it's translated correctly. I I like the King James probably because I grew up on it, and there's the JST on it. But they, get, but they get pretty lazy. Their translations pretty... are not suspect. The best. They're suspect. Okay, I, I, and. And if you want, we can go into Genesis 1, 1 through 2 even. That even, that's, yeah. Genesis 1, 1 through 2 is a new moon day. And, and I'll, I'll, I'm going to, I'll shut up because I'm letting Ben drive right now, but just FYI. <laughs> yeah. So we have established that seasons actually means appointed times. It doesn't mean summer, winter spring fall it means the appointed times of yahweh when we have an appointment with yahweh it is determined by the sun and the moon in fact i'm, I'm going to interject a little bit when adam sinned, hand up, yahweh came at an appointed time it was the scheduled time it was the time that adam knew that yahweh was coming down just before that Right, we could go look at the actual account, but he knew Yahweh was coming at that time. They were supposed to have a walk together. If you go look at some of the Hebrew that goes behind it, the English translation. A walk and a talk. Yeah. Yep. Anyways, go. Sorry, Ben. I so, but but the bit. but the point but the point for our new moon day discussion is that Moedim means appointed times. Uh, the, so seasons means appointed times. When you have an appointment with Yahweh, it is determined by the sun and the moon. The, right. the, the he light. gave us the sun and the moon to show us. The, and God, Elohim, made two great lights, the greater light, the sun, to dominate, to rule or dominate the day, and the lesser light, moon, to rule or dominate the night. And he made the stars also. <laughs> the thing is, does he say here that the stars rule anything? No. Yeah. In fact, this. In fact, that's why I'm putting in my glyph. It's kind of a side note. Oh. And and if you really wanted to get into details, um, hmm. the year according to the stars is longer than the year according to the spring equinox. So um, you can't use it for seasons because it will oh, mess up your true. seasons. So, Sue, you have a question. Um, I have a comment. Okay. Yes. Go ahead. Um, the seasons themselves, spring, summer, fall, are also appointed times appointed by the Lord. Hmm. Number one. Number two. Right here, and this might be a question. It's um, where it's talking about the greater light to rule the day. And the lesser light, now what is the light? The law. So there's a greater law and a lesser law to rule the night. Well, so, let's take a look. Let's go into the words, the actual original words where yeah, we're talking yeah, so, about light here. Uh, which, what, that's 14, right? Yeah. The, 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 it, this is actually this is actually part of being the Berean. No, no, no that, that one's 16, so... Yeah. Let's yeah, actually, that's that's actually part of being the Berean is that we go into the actual words as they were originally intended. Let's take a look at the word for greater light uh, uh, here. What uh, is the Hebrew? Greater word? light or the lesser light, Sue? Or some of both? Well, let's look at both. Okay, so I, I'm actually going to go to the interlinear then. <coughs> um. Mm -hmm. So greater, uh, here's the Hebrew, great, large, uh, large could definitely go with the sun there, right? Uh, number intensity, that's 
uh, the sun's definitely more intense. In fact, the moon reflects the sun's light, right? Um, loud, that's kind of weird. That doesn't go with this context. Um, important. Older. So I, I actually believe the sun and the moon were created at the same time. So I don't think older goes in this context, personally. Um, but anyways. Uh, important things. Uh, the sun's definitely more important than the moon. In fact, uh, is it Malachi yeah. 3? I forget which chapter. It's 3 or 4, it calls Yeshua the sun, S-U-N of righteousness, not S-O-N, S-U-N. Well, and that actually that actually coincides with one of the definitions where it said God himself. Okay. Oh, did it? I didn't notice that one. So that's that's a good thing to bring out. Oh, yeah. Uh, I see it now that you mentioned it. In fact, actually, let's just go. The greater up. light is God himself. Yes. And what's the lesser light? <coughs> the lesser light would be Satan. I, well, no. actually, I, I'm going to disagree. Mm -hmm. um, and You're going to well, disagree? No, I'm, I'm just... I'm just positing something. No. I mean, I'm just positing something, throwing something out there. So, <laughs> I, I, so I, I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not, not at all. Tonight. I'm not at all sold on that one. I'm the, just the lesser throwing light something out there. <laughs> the, the lesser light here. Could, uh, this also deals with the, the creation prophecy, okay? And the lesser light is John the Baptist, okay? and all the lesser that. light no, i don't buy it well let's go let all right well let, let's go look at what i got well, let's go back to the original it. text and take a look at lesser light let's take a look well, at lesser light uh, in the original text i think i think that that it says certain things since certain things have been revealed from looking at the original text but let's keep doing that well, hold, hold on. I, 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 I do. I, I know I, have, I like my squirrels. I, I, I am going to push us on a squirrel. Okay. Okay. As long as we go back to the original text. No, no, yeah, that, that's fine. And I, I'm happy <laughs> to go back to the original text. I, and hey, Ben, can you we spell out Moy Dean in the chat? I'm not sure. Yes. In, the chat. in the chat. Okay. <coughs> Hmm. Which one of these is it? Oh, thank you. Uh, oh, no, 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 no. It's not that one. Sorry. Uh, yeah. No, oh. no, no, it's not that one. Oh. Uh, it's this one. Okay. Then what is in the light? When you say no, no the, the greater light to rule the day, what is the day? Is the day not when um, we are when we have awakened when we are full of light when when we are uh, living okay. the um, I, I, principles I of the gospel going. and the night and the night is when we're in the dark and when we are still learning and not yet living and not and not actually yet, a real uh, light uh, I, yes i agree with you on that so this is a different angle that i'm going up but i, I completely agree with what you're stating out right there because even when, yeah that actually makes sense i i so i agree with you this is a different angle that i was approaching it but i even when <coughs> um now the people came and just before yeshua was when Yeshua was praying, right, just before they, the people took him, the temple, the temple guards, if I remember correctly, took him. When they came and get him, he said something along the, long, along the lines of, this is the time you came to get me, meaning you're coming to get me during the time of Satan's time. Because nighttime is Satan's time. So, yes, I agree with that. I'm going off of a different angle of the prophecy that goes along with. I never the, said the, the, that the, the lesser light is Satan's time. No. It, oh, it, then what the, did you. And, she said that the lesser light is when we are not, the lesser light is when we're not fully awake, we're not fully aware, we're not walking. When we're still learning. Oh, right, right, right. Oh, okay. But I, I, I will say, though, it, the. 
Night time is Satan's time. So there, there's there's multiple angles to this, but more there's more than one there's more than one there's more than one way there's more than one way to look at this. So by that, are you because nighttime is Satan time? I go with that, okay. But is there some kind of scriptural reference for it, like you know, the devil or Satan rules the waters? Uh, so, uh, so here's an interesting on that one. The reason Satan rules the waters because that's where the sea beast is. Yeah, because it's where the, the deep is? waters, the sea, sea beast. beast. What are sea beasts? Well, the sea beast is Satan's church oh, and his beast. teachings. Oh, yeah, yeah, the sea beast. Sea beast. Yeah, it's um, a, the mystery. The mystery religion. Yeah, yeah, it's the mystery religion. It's it's mystery Babylon. That's the sea beast. But well, that's I. So here, okay. here's then one thing. So, go ahead, Sue. Well, you were saying that um, the sun is more important than the moon. Um, yeah. But you were saying they were created at the same time. I believe um, so, yes. In, in um, let's see, where is it? It is in, um, hold on just a second. First Corinthians 12. Okay. But it talks about the parts to... of the body and how there's no one part that's more important than the other. We need them all. They all have different assignments. They all have different purposes. Um, and so they, they all have different a part that they fill Correct. for the whole I, and but i agree we're with all that. a body of christ and so all the parts are equal um in, in except their, for the, the head the body can't needs them all they can't right, function right, right. without anyone so the reason why i would still okay. say the son is the head the son is yeshua the son is the messiah and he's the most important part the rest of us are all equal the messiah is the most important he directs. He That's directs all I the other parts. That. The head, the the head, the head, the brain directs all other parts. Yeah. Um, so as the body of the Messiah, we're all equal, and I agree with that. Well, see, I I I still don't know where you get this idea that the lesser light is Satan. I don't believe Satan. Has I know. I it, I didn't say. It. I was, I was just no, throwing that out as something out there. Stephen is agreeing with you, though. No, I didn't. He's saying that Satan no, rules I the night. No, what he's saying, what he, he is Satan saying, what he is saying, he is not saying that the lesser light is Satan. I okay. didn't say that. Well, I agree with is that the greater is. light is the Elohim, which is a plural word, and the lesser uh, light is the Yeshua, Yah, Yahweh, um, Jesus Christ. Okay, so let, Yeshua let's talk, Yahweh, let's, let's, those refer to Christ, let, and the greater light Elohim. refers to the Elohim. And let's they are not about, the same. They couldn't possibly be the same. Christ prays, he doesn't pray to himself, he prays to the Father. They are uh, two individual beings. No, they are not. not the same. They yes, are they are. The same. And and when you're teaching otherwise is means that. I mean, I came here to learn to live the high holy days. I didn't come here to be preached to. I didn't come here to argue. That's for sure. You are I did arguing. Not come right. here to argue. You didn't come here but to argue. Why preaching. are you arguing, Sue? Let's go. Let's, let's talk the about the that sacrament you're teaching prayer. Are false. No, I'm not. Let's go look at this from scriptures. In the sacrament prayers, we're praying to the eternal Father. Okay, right? Yes. Do we agree on that? In the name of Jesus Christ. We're okay. not praying. Wait, let me finish my thought here. Okay. What yeah. does yeah. the Book of Mormon define the eternal father as? Mosiah 16, 15. Teach them that redemption's coming through the Messiah, Yahweh, who is the very eternal father. Emma 11, 38, 39. Now, Zerum okay. said unto him, is the son of God, the e very eternal father. And Amulek said unto him, yea, he is the very eternal father of heaven and earth. Okay, so what you've done things. here, if you've gotten several scriptures and you put them all here together, that back up what you believe. 
okay? But there are other scriptures, many of them, that don't back up with your belief, and they're not here on your well, list. I'm not sure. I'm just, no, and I found this with case, you Sue. over and over and over Yeshua again. Yeshua is I the can... very eternal Father. Just, that, just let's go look at Mosiah. Well, I mean, there are different ways to understand oh, that. Yeah. And you, the way you understand that is the way you understand it, but that's not the way I understand it. That I understand this is a very controversial subject, and I didn't bring it up. You're the ringing, you're the one that's bringing it up, and I'm responding to it. Okay, let's look at yeah, Ether 314. Uh, Go ahead, someone's no, saying, trying to you're say the something. one that's teaching, and I'm the one that's here is supposed to be learning from you. But what I'm learning from you is not. Well, instead of, by other things correct. that i have learned but, and by the spirit of the lord which let's which I, what i'd like to see is all of us be truth seekers i don't know exactly what Stephen's <laughs> position is and i'm not sure exactly what you're taking on bridge with susan but uh my, my <laughs> idea is hey you know i may have a totally different idea you got one you got one i, I it'd be nice <laughs> if we had a forum where we could just talk about it openly and you know talk sure, sure. debate it or at least understand the issue i don't really even understand what you're so talking about. i to um and maybe and i think darren let's maybe um, calm down for just a minute and i think that's probably a good thing that darren's bringing out i am a modalist okay a modalist and let, let's just the definition of a modalist is modalist. it the Father and the Son is one entity, who, and the Father is a title, and so is the Son is a title. And I believe yeah. that the Book of Mormon mm -hmm. and the Lectures on Faith, which Joseph Smith wrote, teaches the exact same thing. In fact, yesterday, we looked at this, and I, I do know... <laughs> This is a controversial subject because it is the rest hey, Sue, let's have most you kind of, of the restoration this, uh, teaches something uh, completely different than this. But let's look at what Joseph Smith wrote on this, okay? So this lecture Lectures on Faith 5 is something that Joseph Smith wrote, okay? Whether if you believe the lecture, it's in his handwriting, right? It's it's in his word print. It's in the way that he it's in it's in the way that he uh, the Sp documents that he it's written in the same manner of language that documents that he wrote are written. Yeah. So this is him. In fact, even those who people who deny the lectures on faith that Joseph Smith didn't write it or didn't write too much of it, even those people, which I disagree with on these points, okay, and I have quotes for it, but even on this point, they all agree that lecture five is Joseph Smith's, okay? There's really no debate who did this one. They all know Joseph Smith did it, okay? <laughs> and so the last piece that was hard for me to resolve on this issue is this right here there are two personages right because i know what the book of mormon says about it and i also thought i knew what lectures on faith said on it per two personages right what i used to believe that says two people but when no, we go look at the definition let's go look at the definition of personages okay so this is not my website just to make this clear, I'm. I I'm not... I'm, I use the 1828 all the time. Okay, so you know this is not my website, and there's Android yeah. apps and there's replications of it. In fact, on my mission, I broke the rules and bought a replica of this on my mission. Uh. Um, so, <laughs> but let's go look at what this word actually means. It's not people or person, okay? personage noun a man or a woman of distinction as an yeah. illustrious person one oh is someone's saying something or is it just echo i'm sorry that's my son in the background oh, oh. that's fine okay 
exterior appearance. So exterior is how someone looks from the outside. Can we, do we agree on that? Sure. Yep. The way it looks from the outside. Um, satire. I, am stature. I that word? Stature. 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 Air. I, I actually, um, I have no idea how that would fit into this context. So countenance. That it's means so, countenance. Oh, so yeah. Air, oh, is that how they spell yeah. that air? Like an air is somebody countenance. has an air about them. Is that, I, I thought that was. Yeah, that's right. actually the right way to spell that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's their count. That is, that, that is what air means, is countenance. Oh, well, I just learned something. I didn't know that. Uh, and, and here's like an example of it, like as a Paul, tall person or a stately personage. Mm -hmm. So here's another important one, because um, I think exterior appearance that to me, that's how they look from the outside, right? Mm -hmm. Two, character assumed. So when I hear that, that sounds like a play. And in a play, it sounds like a what? A play. Play. A play. Like sock. Um, oh, a musical. No, a Broadway performance. A yeah, performance. Um, <laughs> when um. Oh no! The, my name. Uh, the guy that's really famous uh, for plays. Shakespeare. Shakespeare. That's the name I'm looking for. Like a Shakespeare play, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was going to say throughout history there's been a lot of them well yeah. I, I mean this is sidetrack there's possibility you actually like, stole this the, place the, from the, somebody the, else but, but, the, but the character character is soon in a play in a play oftentimes you'll have more than one person and you'll have a person play more than one role okay, I've done it right. several times uh, right 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 right, right. And so one entity had two characters in a play, right? I've actually played up to 10. Oh. Okay. You're stretching it. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, you okay, might so, as well be the whole movie. So I, I'm, I'm with yeah. you. I get it. There's, there's a chance, Stephen, if I'm understanding you right, that uh, maybe it's just one being and having different phases or, or something kind of along those lines. Right. Uh, and I, 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 I wouldn't call it phases, but I would agree with that, which I think you're trying to bring out. I would bring it out as more responsibilities or titles. Okay. Than phases okay cool. Is the way that I cool. would put it. But yeah. I think we're in the agreement of that. I've just, right. I would prefer responsibilities or titles okay and so so susan what you're saying is basically it's got to be the three personages or at least two two separate beings and so it's not two it's many it the elohim is is the creators of universes well so elohim is um, an interesting word and <laughs> this, Have they're you ever the heard of greater majestic? light and the lesser light is the sun who the god of this world the father of this world the creator of this world who came here as the son and prayed to the fathers, the father. And that's what Mormonism teaches. And uh, we will disagree on what Mormonism teaches as we are right now. Well, okay. So be careful with you, that. That's term. fine. But what then do you, are the major differences between the Christianity that was already here where that false idea is perpetuated that the father and the son are one in the same being um, so that christianity being, was already here when joseph came what what is it that he restored no that was so, so there's a different important? no so what christianity has was was a try on god triune god triune right. god three gods in one i i didn't say three i said two in fact lectures on faith actually even states two personages in one in fact on this point let, let's <coughs> so fyi there's a forgotten grammar because you keep bringing up elohim is uh, plural it's not it's a majestic plural meaning it's royalty 
it's applied to royalty. It's a, a grammar that has been forgotten. And there I are- I haven't forgotten that grammar. It's still plural. Just because uh, she says it, we doesn't make it a singular word. Majestic if plural a queen says is a we, singular, it's still a plural word that she's referring to herself and all the past queens. Like, because of who I am, we, meaning myself and my position and all the past queens like me. It's a plural word. So in, in the Tanakh, the Old Testament, Elohim is applied to a single judge. And this video shows multiple examples of that. If it is plural, as so we let think me, of it as today, let, let me that ask you, would but, be sorry, incorrect. Go Sorry, go ahead. But when, no, but but we're not talking of today. We're talking about the grammar at that time. And the point right. is, it, it was multiple judges mm. that were referred to that way, not one. It but, was okay. a there were passages that they that were referred refer to because it referred to all the judges who have held that position, just like the queen. It was didn't refer just to that man, but in his position, he was speaking in his position, and therefore no. he was referring to himself and all the men who had served oh, in so, that okay, position. So let me jump in. Let me just jump in real quick. Okay. So so let me just ask this question to maybe look at it from a different perspective or angle. What my mother was an English teacher, by the way. <laughs> no, yeah, not a Hebrew one, though. That's really <laughs> so. I guess my point is, what is it? What uh, what's the key point of doctrine that this affects? The Godhead. This 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 the nature of the Godhead. The nature, the nature, of, the nature the Godhead. of the Godhead. In fact, okay. what I'm stating here, which is very controversial, that the Godhead is not what the LDS Church teaches. That the Father and Son is the same person, and that the Holy Ghost is the law. And, so and we don't have Joseph it? here to speak for himself, well, though we, yeah, do we do have the right things here. that he wrote. We have the things that he wrote, so, which is him. Well, and he said it was himself. two personages. And I don't know why he would have said that. It's right here. And so here's one place, two personages. So <laughs> right. we can finish that dictionary definition, but these are exterior appearance, which I find a key one. And I know Ben... Um, is I a little different on me. He likes the character assumed or represented one more. Okay, but, but you're forgetting the first line up there where it says personage, a man or a woman of distinction as an illustrious personage. There is yeah, like, like the majestic plural. It's right, like which meant plural, which, which didn't mean that one, one individual. It meant it all the people one, that have held that no, it's one person. Zach, what, what you trying to add something here, Zach? Yes, Sue was asking about like, like the Christianity that we know of, like mm -hmm. during his time and now, now, like it's it's that was basically started by the Rome. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, right. Try on exactly. God is pagan. Period. Try. That's true. So but DNC but you're saying the same thing. You're just no, I'm not. You're just I'm not bringing it down to two on, instead of one. I am one. not saying a try on God. I mean, instead of three. No, that's true. You're not. But you're just bringing it down to two to to th to one of two instead of two. Yeah, that's what's actually in the Book of Mormon and right here on Lectures on Faith, which Joseph Smith wrote. Look at the definition of personages. Person. I I did a man or a woman. A man or woman. Or. And so the, the majestic yes, plural or. can be applied to a man or a woman. Here it is being applied to a man, not both. So, um, yeah. So, it says um, two. It says or, not both. It's right. one or the other. Yes, right. And here Precisely. it's being applied to one man. It says two. I I, I just it, I just agree. I, I, okay. Can, can, where, where can we actually on this page? Can we actually where's, just? Where's can we two go back to on the page? definition, Sue? Where is two applied? They, they aren't. They aren't. 
they're not defining they two personages. They're defining one personage. I mean, there's, and you know, the thing is, is looking so at the look, definition. Sarah, I, there are two exterior appearances who constitute the great naturalist governing okay. supreme power. Yes. Okay. okay. So this is, can, let's go into what Joseph Smith has said and actually go past personages so that we can actually see what he said on the matter. Okay. There are two personages, there are two personages who constitute the great matchless governing and supreme power over all things by whom all things were created and made that are created and made, whether visible or invisible whether in heaven, on earth, or in the earth, under the earth, or throughout the immensity of space. They are okay. the Father and the Son. So let's pause the right there. Who created heaven and earth? The Son, the eternal Father, who is Yeshua. This is applying the exterior appearances to who created heaven and earth. And your definition of the Godhead, Sue, the Father did not create it, only the Son did. But this is stating these two personages created everything. They're well, the Father. So, uh, if I may, uh, so you have God or Elohim in the temple ceremony, anyway. And then you have Jehovah and Michael. So, to answer your question, who created the earth? So, first of all, I, the LDS Brighamite Temple Ceremony is a cult. I know, so I know. I know. we should not use that for trying to find truth. We should use scripture. It's true. Okay? I don't disagree. Because, in fact, just a little tidbit for you. In Brigham Young's time, there was four in that ceremony and not three as there is now. But that's a little side note. Just FYI. So oh no! I, 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 went a good one, a, I went to the temple in 1987 before the changes, and so I'm well aware. Well, there is no <clears throat> so let's happen. so let's go back. Let's go back to where to where to where we were. So we have oh, here established that the Father and the Son. Uh, the Joseph Smith is stating that the Father and the Son, to, uh, that the Father and the Son created heaven and earth. Okay, right. so this is where I'm bringing out how. The Book of Mormon states only the sun created the created earth. Created heaven. No, it states heaven and earth. We can go. We can go double check me if you would like. Yeah, I, actually, let's yes, let's double check. Yeah, let's double that's, check. That's what yeah, Berean should do: is go double check, right? So, but again, you it depends on what how you're using the word heaven too. Yeah. Heaven is a vast, huge place. Well, let's, <laughs> there's let's a lot of the scriptures. So, Stephen, what what are you, you what is this here? This tool that you're using? And well, this, this, this is one this note. Is one note. Yeah. This right here is one. These are my notes. In fact, if you want, um, I give all the <laughs> religious notes to everybody. Um, just so you're aware, if you are interested, um, yeah, you. You can go get go get all my ammo. All right. That that sounds funny, but I'm. I mean, you, you can. <laughs> no man. Yeah, you, remember, you, you, we had ammo. Yeah, you can, all that so stuff. You, he's actually he's actually not withholding his notes from you, and you can look up all these things. Yeah, I, I give you everything right there. That link will give you all my notes that we're looking at here. Now, oh, okay. I don't have everything that's in my head right there, so right. it's not right. everything, but it is the majority the of it. You can go get it. Yeah. That's right. There's your link right there. So I, uh, yeah, so, I hide nothing. Okay, and I it's and all I there think, for people to get if they want. And I think it's important always that we go back to that when there is a dispute or disagreement. Oh. That rather than get unpleasant with each other, that we go back to the scriptures and we yeah. yeah. And, 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 and I, I think, think Darren was good at bringing you know, the, like, the temperature down. So it's I, interesting I for me that. to understand this because I hadn't heard of a lot of the terminology, a modalist, and you know different things like that. So it's interesting for me to hear also. So you're, it, you're a little you're, interesting. So kid. let me see if I understand That's what you're funny. saying here. You're saying 
and, and correct me if I'm wrong, because I could be very wrong. You're saying that you believe or you have studied and and you feel like you have been told that Elohim and, and Yeshua are the same person just in different modes? Uh Basically, yes. In fact, you'll see through the Book of Mormon and the Tanakh that Elohim and Yahweh is used interchangeably all over the place. Bible hmm. and Tanakh, which is the Old Testament, it uses Elohim and Yahweh interchangeably all over the place. In fact, sometimes they'll put it right next to each other. The Book of Mormon does too. Yeah, it's all over. Hmm. The problem is is that James E. Talmadge with his Jesus the Christ has screwed up a lot of minds. Really. Well, the temple and, too. And the temple ceremony, which a lot of it he got from the temple ceremony, but James mm. E. Talmadge solidified mm -hmm. it with his book, Jesus the Christ. But, our, but um, <laughs> so that, that's what you mean when you say that you are a modalist. Yeah, modalist yeah. is that the one entity has two modes. One is the okay. father. And was, one is the son. I was a little confused in fact, by, by that the, statement. The Catholic Church, not that this is a good example, because they were they. So Jamie's challenge in the great apostasy, he claims that the Catholic Church lost authority by changing the ordinances in councils, which is what the LDS Church is, Brigham Mike Church is doing right now. But I will disagree with him on that. They never had authority period but an interesting little tidbit with that little caveat right there the catholic church used to teach modalism you can go look at the early catholic church fathers they taught modalism and not the triune <coughs> god the triune god came into more into play when they got perverted more by paganism it's uh, in the Council, oh, of, Nicaea, Susan, Susan the Council of Nicaea is where they, the Council of Nicaea is where they set in place the triune God. Yeah, that's where they codified it. It was mm -hmm. starting to creep in before that, but mm -hmm. Constantine wanted unification in his triune God stuff. And they only, the only bishops that were where the majority of the bishops that were invited to that council kind of pretty much to some degree already agreed with the triune God in some form or manner. And well, at Jesus baptism, there were the three, you know, entities, I guess. Right. Um, right. And we can go talk about that um, because it, the, probably the hardest part it, to accept in the modalism is that Yeshua prayed to himself. And I the, acknowledge the, that. But at the same time, wait, the wait side, oh, oh, oh. You, so, you're saying that Yeshua was praying to himself? Yeah, I did. Do you talk to yourself? All the time. I don't, and by the way, I'm not throwing that out. I'm not disagreeing because I think there is a huge part when we talk about the coming of the Lord. I think that's an analogy for all of us you know, 122 in, in my fault, in the followers of Christ group or whatever. I mean, there's just a very few number of us that are at this point. And I guess what I'm trying to say is, uh, you know, we are the Lord. When we realize, hey, we're responsible for our destiny, we, you know, not-, uh, not So I will disagree with that. And that to me is more new age Christ consciousness that's going on because I'm not Yahweh. I can't. No, 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 I don't, no, 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 I, I don't mean to you. suggest that I am that person, uh, no, what I'm suggesting is that we have to come to a realization of the power that we have as divine beings and children of God to become like that, and, and well, that means, so we, we actually have no power, the only power that we have is lent to us from Yeshua, who never broke the law. No doubt. So I agree. We have no power. We have broken the law. We, we do, though, Stu. I mean, it's not our power. It's, it's like Rush Limbaugh used to say. Talent on loan from God, you know? Well, sure, sure. 
I, I, I'm throwing in to make sure that we know it's only the only power that we have is lent to us from Yahweh, period. Yeah. We have none totally. on, on our own accord. Yeah, I agree totally. And as we choose to walk in to walk in the ways of Yeshua, in the footsteps of Yeshua, Amashiach, then we are entrusted with more and more power, but we have to, but we have to walk in his footsteps, which is the law. <coughs> well, I, I, I think that's one way of looking at it is walking in his footsteps. But I also think like we were talking yesterday about the angel that came to Alma the younger, the people that are in tune with, with the law, you know, I guess, and the law, I think you have to first say it's uh, love God and love your neighbor. And then the law in the books of Moses uh i appreciate your definition of that ben in your testimony the other day but so i'm just saying that uh so we've got these uh anyway i'm just saying we've got those two laws so that's that's where i focus everything i think sure sure well the one thing on that i'll just say real quick that a lot of people love to leave out hangs all the law and the prophets Oh, for the sure. law and the prophets are teaching us how Yahweh wants us to love him and other people. Yeah, and become one. So when by extension, is... And by extension, the other part that a lot of people overlook is the last part of that statement where they say, love thy neighbor as thyself. As thyself. Yeah. yeah. And, it's, and, and it's not that we become one with each other or that we all come to consensus. It's that we become one with God through having his law written upon our hearts, which is the very definition of the broken vote. Exactly. It, it's yeah. not that we take a vote and say, oh, or someone has the best argument that this is what it is. That's right. Because that's what a lot of these groups do. They just want consensus within the people. It's no. consensus with Yahweh's words. That's yeah. what makes us one. We're one in Yeshua. Not yes. one within the group. Totally. And there's right, 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 a completely right. different sense. approach and purpose and goal in those two different ways of thinking. Because one now, is actually universalism, which is what Catholic is. And then one is united with Yahweh's ancient and eternal ways. Agreed. So yeah, uh, yeah but, but you see what I'm saying. Ben Ben used the metaphor of walking in the footsteps. I'm saying it's like you know congealing as all these sovereign individuals around the you know well, the way of the truth and the light. You know? the, he he actually gets that metaphor from scriptures though too. Um, and the and the um, we are only sovereign inside the will of Yahweh. If we are outside the will of God, not. we are a slave to Satan and we are of the dust. Mm, yeah. So we are only <laughs> sovereign as we walk in the truth. Well, yeah, I say truly, of our sovereign. Truly sovereign. But sovereignty, I'm looking at it more from a uh, political definition in the world, in, in our world, each individual is a sovereign unto themselves that they can choose good or evil. Okay. I, I totally agree with yeah. what you're saying, Ben. Yeah, okay, yeah. So, yeah. so okay. just this is where, and I would get it too, where at least one place that we are to walk in his footsteps, this is First John 2, uh, three through yeah. six. No, 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 absolutely, he's right on. I didn't mean to disparage the, it's right on. Yeah, that, that that's, that's where the true. That's where the true sov That's where the true sovereignty comes in. Right. Now we're all free to choose. We're all free to choose. Captivity, or yeah, we, the the, the 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 thing that's interesting. Or that sovereignty we, that you're talking about. We we right. get to choose what we do, the walk and the path that we take. Either it's the straight and narrow or the vast and wide. We don't get to pick the consequences that happen because of it. And we also don't get to redefine the broad and wide as the straight and narrow. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> um, in, in the straight People and narrow, try. guess what? It didn't go from this to this. Right. It stayed this. Right, right. 
and it stayed exactly the same. Yeah, it right. didn't change. In fact, Yahweh states his ways don't change. And if you want, we can sidetrack it on a little bit, but we should maybe more go back to the other subject. But uh, we were, we um, are actually I was actually trying to give Susan what she came here for, which was information on the new moon and the uh, <laughs> uh, I, <laughs> and we got sidetracked into an argument and i geez, and that's man. okay that's, that's okay that, uh, that, that <laughs> was like a maze of all sorts of stuff and then well, you were somehow new moon and, and oh, I would, but i but i would it. like, like surfing the internet <laughs> and but i might have triggered it on accident and i didn't mean to cause it but i i am a modalist and that is what I see Joseph Smith and the Book of Mormon, mm -hmm. the Old Testament and the New Testament teaching. And I'm happy to go mm -hmm. into that, but maybe we take a little break from that. I, yeah, and I, don't, let, I don't. Let, let Ben finish and then we can go back. So that yeah. way we'll let the steam and, and I'll be go honest off with that, and then we can go back. I think there's a lot more about the law that we can focus on that I don't know about. I, that's, that's a concern. Uh, I don't even know if it's a concern. I think I might sort of agree with you, but to the extent that Susan's point is saying, you know, this, this plural majestic, which is the word that you use, but I think Susan's trying to say, if I understood her right, is, uh, you know, there's, there's like a chain. Or, I hate right. to I, I, so she's stating the majestic plural is pointing to multiple people. And so she's saying it's pointing to the office. I, I think, and, and she can correct me, but the way that I would interpret what she's saying, the majestic plural is pointing to the office of the people that's in that office where I'm stating it actually points to a specific person. Yeah. yeah. Not so, in old English. That's, but that, you have to, I mean, that's, English, I can too. see why this the is so controversial. This is a good topic. The Hebrew scriptures are Hebrew, not old English. Yeah, but it, it and, and Elohim refers is Hebrew, but queen, the queen of England is English. Well, and she's re that when that queen says we are not amused or whatever she's saying, we, she's speaking of herself in her position as queen at herself, and referring though, to that. We're going but to disagree that it's referring because to all the people behind her. Stephen, can we Stephen. let people finish? We, let, we all need to talk. Why? We all need to talk. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Go ahead, okay. Sue. I'm well, sorry. anyway, I've made my point. That's that's old English, and right, and right. that's what we're dealing in English right now. Even though Where? Elohim is a Hebrew word, I, I it, disagree. It's it, a, a Hebrew word that's plural in the same manner in which the word queen is, or the word we used by a queen is is plural oh, and, and right. but she's talking about herself okay. not everybody okay, so, behind her right um okay okay uh, okay so that we have finished so now we have the crux we now we have the crux of where uh, uh, so i think now we have the crux of where we are uh, we, now we're in now we have that all kind of crystallized can we go back to the new moon day? Sure, sure. sure. Yeah, I, I just did that. <laughs> so, okay. And maybe I opened, and maybe I opened it up. And maybe I opened that up because I, I, I read it the I don't next remember. I'm It's totally own. cool. I've been learning the whole time. So I, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it's a lot, it's a lot to go and study, uh, maybe. you know, on my own, uh, through my own. Uh, yeah, uh, you know. Yeah. So yeah, I sure. yeah, it's, it's a, a lot. And, it's a lot I'm, to study. So so if I open so if I opened up that can of worms, hopefully somebody got something out of it. Hopefully we got something out of it together. Um, I apologize if I introduced uh, contention. My apologies. Well, well I introduced the contention, but that's <laughs> well, but that's not, um, let's go back to the new move. All right, so let's yes. go back to the back to the new moon day. Let's go back to uh, Genesis chapter one, verse fourteen. Oh, okay. And we're going to leave off any discussion of the Godhead because that's sure, not yeah. important to what we're talking that's, about. That's right. off the table right now. Okay. <laughs> okay. Table. We can we, we'll, so, we'll go back to it later, but let, let's yeah. that's off the table. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so okay. let's so back to Genesis chapter one, verse fourteen. 
Thank God said. Uh, was it 14 or 16? It was, uh, yeah, oh, yeah, 16, 16, 16. <laughs> okay, so we were talking about the, we're, oh, we're talking about because the, because we caught it talked about greater, that's how. Greater and lesser lights. Um, yeah, and so, yeah, that's how we got there. We were going into the wording of 16, and I probably, and uh, when 14 was sufficient to illustrate. Oh, oh that. and then, so the, we were then going off of what the lesser light was. Or, or yeah, or yeah, we were looking to define. The, we were looking to define the lesser light according to. I, I, it, so let's let's actually do that really quick and finish up one that thing, look I, I into the on, root on the language. lesser light. I, I do agree with one the the one angle that uh, Sue brought up. Okay, um, I I was just more thinking about a different angle on that in that <coughs> in the creation prophecy you know i have some here and we can talk more about it later and I, I need to update this some but in the creation prophecy yeah because the creation this, is not just an event it's a prophecy yeah it is but the sun <laughs> and the moon is appointed in the fourth millennium yeshua came in the fourth millennium and so did john the baptist Yeshua had 12 followers, a.k.a. the 12 moons of the year. And this is one part I need to update here. And I, I thought there were 13. Is, sorry, go ahead, Sue. I thought there were 13 new moons in a year. Um, that's, that's, on that's, a, that's on occasion. That's on occasion. occasion. And okay. that's not the ideal. Um, in fact, when this is a little sidetracked, but just to go on that, that Noah, when he was alive, it was always 12. It was about 700 BC that it changed to where sometimes it's 13. And we can sidetrack on that if you want. But actually, no, 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 no. let's let's this. concentrate on on what Ben is trying to get through. Sure, sure, yeah. sure, sure. Let, let me Wait. let me just finish this yeah. one thought. The, the reason I said that John the Baptist is the lesser light is because he is the one that reflects Yeshua's light when the sun yeshua was here on earth and in fact this is non-conical but there are good sources for it in my opinion that he had 30 followers just like there's 30 days of the moon john the baptist, john the baptist had 30 disciples yeah uh, and we could talk about some of these other points but that's why i say mm. that john the baptist is the lesser light and yeshua mm. is the greater light and then in addition, 70 BC is actually during the fourth millennium. And that's when you had to start actually having to look at the sun and the moon because you couldn't just count 30 to get <coughs> your moon moons anymore. 700 BC. Yeah. yeah, give or take 700 BC is when you actually had to start watching the sun and moon. <laughs> it's when the it's when the lord it's when the lord moved the sun back on the sun and it's when the lord moved the sundial back for hezekiah yeah. so let me just let's go to look at those mm -hmm. verses um, and so the timing to me even uh, of when this happened helps prove the lunar solar calendar to me because it goes along with the creation prophecy um mm. it's this one right here so uh if, if you have any question i believe in joseph smith this would help um uh, resolve that because here i am quoting him but he was a cast caster fist meaning catastrophist yeah that word <laughs> Sorry. that one right. i have a speech impediment but as in there were events in history that changed things dramatically rather than the uniformist uniformist states that it changes slowly and surely <clears throat> they're completely different but anyways here's the event in scriptures uh i think probably mm. the most famous one is this one though okay i'll read that and hezekiah said unto isaiah what shall the sign be that, what shall be the sign that the lord will heal me that i will shall go up into the house of the lord <laughs> on the third day and Isaiah said, "The sign shall this sign shalt thou have of the Lord that the Lord will do the thing with that He hath spoken. 
Shall the shadow go forward 10 degrees or go back 10 degrees? And Hezekiah answered, It is a light thing for the shadow to go down 10 degrees. Nay, but let the shadow return backward 10 degrees. And Isaiah the prophet cried unto the Lord and he brought the shadow 10 degrees backwards by which it had gone down in the dial of Ahaz. Hmm. And so, these and so we have so he literally event. turned back time. Yeah, it changed time. And, and if you want, um, Worlds in Collision actually talks about that event. And I believe it was caused by a change in Mars. But anyways, that's a sidetrack. And I, I do understand that some speculation, but I do think there's a lot of proof for that. But mm. the calendars of the world all changed from 360 days to 365 at that point. Go ahead, Zach. Oh, could that scripture also be like pointing to Yeshua, his death and resurrection? Just because three days and the... <laughs> and, um, he was close to death. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep, yep. Yeah, that Hezekiah was a type of Christ. Yes. Well, actually, was, like the third day, that's interesting, and the three days in the tombs. And because yeah. also the, the, the sun yeah, was so dark the, and stuff like that. Yeah, so it is, yeah, uh, it's actually... That's, it's, I, I agree with you. I hadn't thought about that, but um, looking yeah, at this it is a, this is it, also I, a, yes, I would say yes. Yeah, the, yeah, this whole circumstance is also a type of Christ, while at the same time, it mm -hmm. did change times and seasons right. so there are, so isn't that great isn't it great when there are like multiple levels of things that are happening in the scriptures and there's mysteries that each of us and there's mysteries within the law that we can discover right right and, and just with what zach bringing out it always almost makes me wonder the 10 degrees could be the 10 commandments but i i mean i might be stretching on that one but i do agree with the, with what zach just brought out hey you might be stretching on that one but yeah, hey that one might be stretching <laughs> but it's 10 yeah, that, yeah, yeah that, 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 to me that, that's kind of a stretch yeah <laughs> I, I can understand i even I don't know it might be a stretch right but anyway yeah right. so <laughs> so that's so okay so that's when the time changed. Right. It's um. And, and but my but my the facts of the matter remain. Happened during the fourth millennium, which is the fourth day when it talks about the sun and the moon are appointed. So, okay. So let's, but the facts remain that the lights of the firmament decide our appointed times. And the, oh, yeah. the, 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 that God gave us the lights in the firmament to show us when we have when we have an appointment with Him. Yeah. And so the lights in the heavens, the sun and the moon, are given to show us when we have an appointment with it. Now the sun determines the beginning of the year. In the spring, as of the spring equinox, the the new the new year begins the first full moon after the spring equinox. So the sun and the moon determine the beginning of the year. So here's my little summary. Um, the day starts at sunrise. The moon starts the sunrise after the dark conjunction. And the year starts the moon after the spring equinox. So there. Um, so yeah. So the, so the sun determines the year. It also be determines the beginning of the day. Sunrise determines the beginning of the day. Well, it's yeah. the sun and the moon that determine the year. The yeah. sun is the first sign. The moon is the second sign. In fact, right. That that even goes along with um, there's for signs right there. Signs are signals, meaning this happened. Now you can go look for this, right? Right. Right. Yeah. The, the fact that the, the yeah. So yeah. So the sun. And so we have our our equal day according to the sundial, spring equinox. There's our first sign. Now we look. For the new moon and that's the beginning of the year well a new moon and then then sunrise dark right. conjunction in the dark conjunction yeah the dark conjunction I, you would just have to clarify because different people there's three typical new moon uh, there's three things that are typically stated as the new moon the dark conjunction uh first sliver and, and there are some that state full moon but if you're interested um, 
Hmm. What? Did I spell it wrong? Yeah, my spelling's not the greatest. <laughs> um, yeah. Sorry, I, I just know it's close to this one, so hold on. No, up. Uh, okay, so. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so this recording, if you're interested, I actually look at, do the, I show the calculations of when the Feast of Trumpet happens. What and time is it? For Feast of Trumpets that happen when Joseph Smith got the, the gold plates, it can't be off of first liver in the evening. And I get into the details on that. If uh, anybody it has to be it has day. to be off of a dark conjunction with the day beginning at sunrise. Yeah. Um, so I I believe in the restoration. And I, I I've put in I've done the math on that one. But anyways, you can go look at it. Um, so a little side note for you. Um, <clears throat> The issue that I that I have with this right here that I bring about most people who believe in the Book of Mormon and Torah, they'll go by first liver and evening. But yet that would make it so <laughs> Joseph Smith did not get the gold plates on the day of trumpets. The Feast of trumpets. Feast of trumpets. Which is about the day of warning. The trumpets to go shout a warning. That's why we got the, the Book of Mormon. It's the last warning before the second coming. But anyways. Um, back back to Genesis. Mm. Just, just going along. So it had that. to. So it would have had to have come out on. It would have had to have come out of the ground on the feast of trumpets. It's the last warning. Yeah. Um, mm. Yeah. The, and so the even the day that Joseph Smith got the gold plates confirms the appointed times that Yahweh does things at his appointed times, which is the high holidays. Is another common name for them now there are there are three types of sabbaths yeah so there, the, the, when we're talking about appointed times we're talking about sabbaths and there are three kinds of sabbaths yeah. there are weekly sabbaths there Which are is the one everybody sabbaths. knows about right? <laughs> it's just yeah. a lot of people don't agree when that is <laughs> yeah there are weekly sabbaths there are monthly sabbaths the new moon day is a monthly Sabbath. Um, and then there are the annual Sabbaths, or the high feasts, high holidays. All of those are important. Right. And so to go along with... Sorry, go ahead, Sue. Hey, what, what, uh, what's the annual Sabbath? It's the high holidays. So it's the Passover, high holiday in Leviticus, in, in, that Leviticus, are in Leviticus. Leviticus 23. It's Passover, uh, Feast of Unleavened Bread, First Fruits, Pentecost slash Shaviot, um, Trumpets, Atonement, and Tabernacles. And also, 13 also um, talks about new moon days. Um, and, the, and the weekly Sabbath. You mean Leviticus 23? Leviticus 23, yeah. Leviticus mm -hmm. 23 actually does also talk about new moon, the monthly, the, the monthly. Can you? I'm pretty sure. The, I know. Pretty sure it does. Let me it check. Ties, it ties the lunar Sabbath to the moon, which I know a lot of people don't like that. But I, I didn't think it mentioned new moon day. So if it does. The six, that well, I, here, right here at the very beginning, it definitely talks about the weekly Sabbath. Oh yeah, because these everything, every, everything mentioned and everything mentioned in Leviticus twenty three is to be honored by God's covenant people throughout all their generations. So, oh, six days that. shall work be done. I did the wrong one. So, yeah, six days shall work be done, but the seventh is the Sabbath of rest and holy convocation. He shall do no work therein. It is the Sabbath of the Lord. Uh, in, in all your dwellings. And then these are the feasts of the Lord, even holy convocations, which he shall proclaim in their seasons, 14th day of the first month at even is the uh, Lord's. So just FYI, that's Moedim there. I mean, oops. Yeah, the word. Oh, yes. These are the feasts of the Lord. 
the word feast the word feast and when you go back into it is also <laughs> Yeah. So these are appointed times. So the English more translation okay. can sometimes make things a little more confusing at times. <laughs> and as far as it's translated correctly. Um, and in a lot of cases, the scriptures are translated by Christians and not Nazarenes or uh, Messianics or whatever um, various okay. branches that believe mm -hmm. in the Old Testament are still valid for today. So it can make things a little more confusing with the, with the interesting translations, right? So in the 14th day of the first month at even is the, pass, is the Lord's Passover. And on the 15th day of the same month is the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Unto the Lord, seven days you must eat unleavened bread. <laughs> and in the first and in the seventh day, there is a holy convocation. <clears throat> this also, this is, uh, yeah. And so, and, it, and then we go, uh, then we go into the explanation of first fruit. And then we go into the explanation of um, first fruits, which is also around this time. Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, When ye be come into the land which I give unto you and shall reap the harvest thereof, then ye shall bring a sheaf of the first fruits of your harvest unto the priest. We shall wave the sheaf before the Lord to be accepted for you. On the morrow after the Sabbath, the priest, the priest shall wave it. Ye shall offer that day when ye have the sheaf and he lamb without blemish the first year of the burnt offering to the Lord. And the meat offering thereof shall be two tenths. Two tenth fields of fine flour mingled with oil, and uh, so and so. There's first fruits. It's actually um, Passover's on the fourteenth. The feast of unleavened bread begins on the fifteenth of the first month, and first fruits begins on the sixteenth. And first fruits is on the sixteenth day. The sixteenth day of that month. Right. Yeah, sixteenth day it of the first. The month. You, 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 you <laughs> got to clarify that because otherwise people start thinking it's the fifteenth day of the of the Gregorian calendar. Yeah, month, sorry, the fifteenth day and the sixteenth. The sixteenth so day so. of the first lunar month. Okay. Yeah. All right. It's the sixteenth. Okay. Also known as Abib. <sighs> and and if we want to, I, I don't know how much to sidetrack on this because we're getting off the moon a little bit, but that gets into inclusive time because of the prophecy three days and three nights. And I, um, I have some on that if anybody's interested for later to go look into. Um, yeah, if you want to post that, uh, if you want to post that link, I'll, I'll definitely get yeah, into it. Um, because when you look at these details it, it actually shows that the day starts in the morning but anyways greeks what how we grew up as hellenistic we think in exclusive time versus the hebrews are inclusive time so anyways uh i won't sidetrack us more than that unless anybody wants to get into the details okay yeah, and, um, yeah we'll, we'll move on <laughs> okay. yep so okay, so I was wrong. The, the it doesn't look like the new moon is in this particular chapter, but the, all the all the annual Sabbaths are set aside in Leviticus twenty three, um, <laughs> um, as as are as as are the weekly Sabbaths. Now the new yeah. moon, the new moon day. So is, I, I'm just going to interject a little bit. I don't know exactly why it's not in here. I have a theory of why it's not in here so seven for the high holidays plus one for the for the weekly one makes eight if you add one more you get nine and yeah. nine is satan's number and that's why my personal opinion why new moon day is not mentioned here because they're avoiding the number nine mm. personal opinion anyways but yeah, the the new moon day was a whole was was a holy day for Israel through uh, for for a very long time. Yeah, um, but Isaiah sixty six is a good one for that. Yeah, Isaiah it, uh, Isaiah sixty six in, in states that we will, that uh, in the millennium from new moon to new moon, and it shall come to pass that from new moon. From one new moon day to another, and from one Sabbath to another, shall all flesh come to worship before me, saith the Lord. <laughs> That's Isaiah 66, 23. Uh, here's another good one for you. 
and uh, when, and uh, the new moon is just like the Sabbath, yeah. except yeah, so. in that it is a day of rest. We do not; it is not a day in which, um, in which um, the activities of the world are engaged in. This we know this because, and we know that they knew this because in Am because of Amos talking about the. Uh, greedy merchants who want to rip off everybody um and th this is what they're saying saying when will the new moon be gone that we may sell corn in the sabbath that we may set forth wheat making the ephah small and the shekel great and falsifying the balances by deceit so the so even these wicked merchants knew that the new moon they could not sell and the sabbath as well so new moon day is a non-work day and a worship day, just like the weekly Sabbath. And so you start with an. Oh, was there was there a question? Nope. No, I thought. Nope. I heard okay. That too, but okay. Yeah, I thought. Uh, yeah. Okay. But so since there's no question, go we go on. So the new moon day. <coughs> so the new moon day. The new moon is the dark conjunction. The new moon day. <laughs> The new moon day is the sunrise that begins the sunrise after the dark conjunction. So um, on, on the sunrise, I, I know most Hebrew rooters and, and Jews will say <clears throat> sunset. Now, I'll just give, we don't have to sidetrack on this too much, but I'll give this resource page. Um, there's lots in the Bible that actually states it's in the morning. My favorite example is manna. Uh, but here's a post, if you want to get, that I did, based on the Book of Mormon, showing the day starts in the morning, from the Book of Mormon. And I give lots of examples from the Book of and Mormon. And there, uh, yeah. The starts in the day. And so, yeah, the, and there's... um. I and I and I'll also shamelessly plug my own presentation uh, that yeah, I made. Let me go get that for you on this very subject. Uh, shamelessly. Um, mm -hmm. Yep, I will shamelessly plug my own presentation. Lots. Here, let me go. Lot, the, for everybody. A lot of a lot of information put into a very tight space. Yeah, let's go get it for everybody. Uh, hold on, because it's a good presentation. I like it. Um, no, 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 that's not the one I want. Uh, this is a good one, anyways, but it's a little sidetrack of what we're talking about, but it's related. But that's not what I meant to do. Uh, this is the one I wanted. Uh, so you guys can have this. Oops, did I hit the wrong key? No, I that's why I changed my keyboard. Um, there's that. So now let's. Let's get Ben's playlist. Um, so, hold on. I'm getting there because it's part of my playlist. It's near mm -hmm. the bottom. And there. Okay. This one's Ben's. And here's his specific link. There you go. It's all. It's all in the chat. All in the chat. Yeah. But um, the the new moon, and so the so the new moon is a Sabbath of rest um, to be spent in worshiping Yahweh. So the uh, and that is the first day of and the new moon day is the first day of the month. Our Sabbaths, the Sabbaths are counted. We count off. Then we go seven days. Yeah, we, have an, we have a weekly Sabbath. Picture yep. Give me, yes. A picture's worth a thousand words. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. so. Um, do you want the one with the scripture on it or do you want the, my version of it? Just, uh, I think your version's pretty clear. So let's okay. get that one up. Yeah. I, I, so the reason why this, this is a minor point. My, 
my version, I put 30 on the right with the other Sabbaths, where most other people in this arena will put 30 on the left with the other work days. So I find it confusing that they, oh, what did I do? I, uh, I don't know. Are you... Let me go get it again. Sorry. Yeah, I have no idea. <laughs> that was, those were some very nice, uh, those are some very nice well, pictures. That, that that to the subject, but I, I didn't mean to do that. But some people will put the 30 on the left with the work days instead of on the right with the Sabbath as I do. So I think that. <coughs> so what happens? So what happens is we have our first, we have our new moon day, first day of the moon, of the moon cycle. The sunrise after the dark conjunction we then go seven days and on the eighth day we have a sabbath and on the 15th day we have a sabbath on the 22nd day we have a sabbath on the 29th day we have a sabbath what is so significant about this is that for the first is that it is documented in the old testament that for the first three months of the first three months of the exodus is documented when their sabbaths were and for those three months it was the 8th 15th 22nd and 29th and you cannot do that on a gregorian calendar right so along with that um three months on this playlist <laughs> video one I mean, video two, three, and five are the ones that really <laughs> converted me, converted me to the lunar Sabbath years in the past. Okay, and mm -hmm. the, he's really good at bringing that out from the scriptures. I'm, I can give a quick overview, or Ben can, uh, and then I'll take some time to look in those those details. But um, but yeah, but those, but I'm just I'm just I'm just feeding you some uh, feeding you some highlights of some of the stuff that's in these videos. Hey, let me ask you: How often does do those days the uh, let's see the seven or let's see the eighth, the fifth, every twenty second, twenty ninth? How often do those line up with uh, a Saturday? Or I guess they're almost always Saturday or Sunday. In a no, they're not. No, no, they're not. No. They're not. No. They're not aligned to the Gregorian calendar at all. They're aligned to the new moon. Well, yeah. no, no, but I mean, just coincidentally, it how happens often occasionally. Do, it happens occasionally. Like, it happens occasionally. February, like very February. Occasionally. Very um, occasionally. Like February, they kind of lined up a little bit. <laughs> like, I, I don't know yeah. if you can see here. So the blues, the last lunar cycle, it lined up with Sunday. And so and a lot of people think we're worshiping on Sunday. Well, not exactly, but right. kind of, right? right? But not really. And um, so, Ben, your point is that we had three months uh, that are recorded of their of their um sabbath cycle and you're saying that three months should be indicative of pretty much their whole time is that the yeah well right. it's we have three months recorded because on our pagan on a pagan calendar that is impossible yeah have your sabbaths on the oh. 8th 15th 22nd oh, oh. And 29th of every of every, uh, of every the day month, of the month right. for three months in a row that's right. Not okay. I got you. I got you. So yeah, it's Roman highlighting Roman. the impossibility of this being found on a pagan count. Right. Okay. It's by the lights in the heavens. Right. And, that and, God and, gave and, us <laughs> that one calendar that's wow. been going for all of time. It's the one calendar that's been going for all the time. Right. And it we can know it by what's in heaven, what what day we're on. So around, this date might be a little off, but around 800 BC, the Roman calendar decided to stop using the moon as knowing when the new moon is. I said moon on purpose, but anyways, that was not a, a punctuation issue. That was on purpose. Um, but I, if I remember, it was around 800 BC. Oh no, it would have been, no, I'm getting my dates wrong. It would have been more like 600 or 500 BC. Sorry. Yeah, five, it was. It's 500. Oh, five. Oh, okay. It's 500. 500. I did my math the wrong direction, because um, it's BC. It's opposite. But anyways, um, around 500 BC, the Roman calendar divorced itself from the moon, and that 
historians admit that even though they don't generally like to talk about it it's there in the historical in fact i'll show you a calendar of rome during yeshua's mortal ministry um it'll it might be <coughs> mine because it's it's, it's it's not seven days eight a through h which a b c d e f g h that's eight days in a week an eight day week the pagans were operating on an eight day week at the time of christ mm. and so the pagan calendar that we're operating under now has not been the same throughout history no in fact here's another change I, i'm just highlighting a couple um let me get the picture hold on here we go the sabbath is called the and the sabbath is called the lord's day because the lord because jesus is lord of the sabbath yeah. it's not called the lord's day because some man in rome decided to call Sunday the Lord's Day. Well, that is also a that is also a counterfeit. That's a counterfeit, but there's there's a double counterfeit going on. But so here, here's a Roman calendar before Constantine changed it. Do you know what this day is right here? Saturday. Yeah. Well Saturday. I was actually more for them because you, <laughs> you and I have that one memorized. <laughs> Is it the kind sickle. of a harvest or the sickle of Saturn? Oh, the, the sun rays Saturn's Sunday. day. Mm. Yeah, okay. <laughs> the horn is moon day. Moon day. That's and anyways, that's Venus. I don't have them all memorized. That's Venus over there on the back. <laughs> and you can go check the historical record. Constantine changed the order of the day by demoting Saturday to the last and moving Sunday to the first in honor of his favorite veneration of Saturn of Sunday or Saturn or Satan. Sol and that's a whole Sol subject, but yeah, it's yeah. Sol it, it, the ancient mystery schools worship Saturn. Saturn is the ancient dark sun, but that's a whole other subject. Hmm. And, and so this goes oh, so, against the as SDAs and other people who say Saturday is the Sabbath because if you go look, it used to be the first day. The first day of the week. I have another yeah. picture that shows that uh, also. I'll show that one. I have two. So that was found in a Roman <laughs> Um They colorized it to make it a little easier to see. I have one other let me find it. Oh, there it is. Just another side note. Sure. Putin has now made sa uh, Sunday the seventh day of the week. So their days start, their weeks start on Monday so that they can all worship on Sunday on the uh, yeah, seventh I, I've day. Heard Rome, some parts of Rome has changed that. And, um, it, it, but I mean, yeah, the point, the, the point being though that <laughs> Neither Saturday nor Sunday is the actual seventh day. Right. right. So here, here's another thing. Necessarily. It, it, no, they well, aren't. They aren't. No, that's, that's aren't. right. Well, they can't be by coincidence. No, no, what I'm, occasion. you're misunderstanding what oh, I'm saying. Making there. a joke. Oh. It, oh, it, I it get happens it. on occasion. Yeah. Okay. Right? <laughs> yeah. Ha, 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 ha. I get it. I get it. I so get it. Yeah. <laughs> if I remember right, this is a candlestick or something was found in Rome also that shows Saturday first. Um, mm -hmm. This one I don't recognize as well without the sickle nor the Sunday, but I do recognize this one, the moon day with the moon uh, sliver. Mm -hmm. Right. I, I'm, I'm not well enough versed into paganism to, to know that Saturday on my own, other than it's that one's moon day but anyway. the interesting thing is is their version there is how close sat how closely saturn resembles zeus hey. yeah it's 
the of ancient Greek mythology. Yeah, that, that's a whole mm -hmm. other subject, and, and he's mm -hmm. that's, yeah, that's a squirrel. And, uh, that's a, yeah, that's yeah. A, that. that somebody needs to tell me that I'm chasing a squirrel, please. Stop making yeah. Stop. yeah, stop chasing that squirrel. <laughs> Go back to your original point. Because yeah. <laughs> um, it's getting late where I'm at. It's past midnight already, and I am super freaking tired. But uh, yeah, but uh, yeah, but I just, I, I just. The new moon day is the basis upon which we know our seventh day. Right. And, and, and the big right. thing, I think, okay. is... And that's important. the big takeaway that I want people to take from everything that we're... Everything that we've talked about. The other things... The other things... Are... We can work out. The other... All other things we can work out. <laughs> And I, 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 but I do believe, and, and if, and as we study the scriptures on these things, I do believe that the truth will come to light. So um, I think to support that, the scriptures have three types of days the mm -hmm. Gregorian calendar, which is relatively new. And I'm trying to find a picture with the dates on it, only has two types of days in it. And so if you want to go by scriptures, you you got to find something to do with that third day. Third type of day. That's it. So the United States, 1752 is when we, that's the Gregorian. Um, so, and, and that uh, that's another side subject on this same thing that's important though. Um, but I, I don't have a calendar or a map that shows when we've accepted the, the Julian stuff but anyways but uh yeah so but the point is we all come here with very from varying schools of we all come here from varying schools of thought yeah. on, on various things i suggest that as we go forward that we go to the scriptures and we let the scriptures proclaim the truth to us through the spirit, through the spirit of the word. And we allow that to happen so that we don't necessarily get, so that we don't necessarily get contentious. Sure, sure. Um, well, and I, I, I would, the problem I, with that is, is that, I don't always know where to find the scriptures. I have a, a more difficult time going to the scriptures. There's yeah, not a particular argument, scripture. Though. I mean, to, hopefully, to, to all show this... what I'm saying because okay. I I know that it's there, but I don't know where. <laughs> okay. Well, but, but you I know, hope, it, I hope it, that, and, 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 enough that we can help each other because somebody know the scripture that you're referring to and. I mean, I hope that we can just kind of be true. Yeah, we can get, and we can, sure, and sure. we can all help each other look at all the possible. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so it's just but, the one and, and the, of not knowing where it is. We can't then use it to go look at to discuss. That's well, but I think what I'm trying to say is that Susan may be able to allude enough that we can understand. Oh, what she means, and oh yeah, that scripture is this. Well, and oh, like I, I know the scripture that she's talking about, and I know where to find it. Yeah, sure, sure. yeah, and, and yeah, and it's just to the point. My point is, that's fine because I even have some where I um I'm like that way also, but until we get to the actual scripture, we can't look at it to discuss it because. Mm. Um, there's a, yeah. a saying that the weakest pencil is greater than the strongest memory, or is it better than the strongest? Something along those lines, right? Right. Um, in fact, my memory is not even giving it correctly. So, but yeah, which kind of illustrates the point. But well, it's to go to because that. it's late. It's it's late. It's late. Sure. Yeah. That's where it is. But, but I but I'm but I'm suggesting what I'm what I am suggesting is that we simply um, and if there you know we have to be willing we have to be, we have to look at what this we have to look at what the scriptures say the word well I, was I, given I, by the spirit the word was given by the spirit 
and the the word the word is the spirit on, and the word is the word of, the word is the word of the spirit unto us. Sure, sure, and, and I uh, I agree with you there, Ben. But even on the controversial subject that came up, I will also say that it took me years to get there and be able to show it from the scriptures. So I I I understand why it's controversial. In fact, I even admitted. I had a hard time with lectures on faith five for a little while until I understood the dictionary definition. Um, but I, I know that's controversial, but I, I'm, right. and, I'm and, trying and not I, to go there too much, but I'm just saying, um, I do hear what you're right. saying, but at the same point, um, some people will look at the same scripture and see something completely different. Right. Um, Absolutely. In, that that is that 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 is true. I, and and I, sometimes I think argue. to help with this is sometimes that we have to think about talk about it a little bit, go chew on it ourselves on our just own, and then come back still, and chew on it some more later. Yeah. And so yeah, this yeah. is why yeah. So we'll, we'll chew be, on this some more later. Be piecemealed because I, I'll, right. some things I do right. share. It's taking me years to get to that point. And so I don't expect anybody to get it right after I just say it once. I right, think. right. And I, like I said, I, I just wanted to make sure that I understood exactly what you were saying earlier, Stephen, when I, when sure. I was asking those questions, because I'm not sure that I am ne not necessarily at that place <laughs> right now uh, where I can... Right. Um, where I can actually accept that point of view, um, not I saying know, I, I don't expect, of you course, to. that your that your your points are not valid or anything like that. It's just I I don't know if I'm actually there. Sure, sure, I understand, and I I believe Yahweh gave me that, and you'll have to take mm -hmm. it to Him yourself to to yeah. confirm or yeah. deny that. And that's, and that's what I'm talking about. That's how at the same together. time, it took me. A long time of unlearning lies to then be able to see it in the scriptures. Now I understand some people will disagree with me on that. Okay, so I'm not trying to push that right, aside. Right, 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 right. right. But right, right. just it on took the point me 30 that, years to get to where I understood that the Hebrews were black. <laughs> Try that one on for a while. Well, <laughs> they're not all black. Right. I do agree some are black, but they all were not black. But they were a black people. They I'll were disagree. a race of black people. All lighter disagree. skinned not 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 um how can i put it chocolate and skinned. lighter not black but right they're a dark. race of negroid uh, people does everybody I'll, I'll disagree with you on that so what uh, that's not one that uh, i really it, want to fight about. Uh, well i mean i've studied this out yeah on the I, record I, I, for uh, thir for now I, well only about 10 years yeah um, I for, for 20 i didn't accept it at all so yeah, you know you've got plenty of time these are the these are the less important these are the less yeah. important truth they're kind of important they're very on a certain level they're important and on another level we can we can discover them right, right. yeah we're, we're, we can discover we're, them and then some of these topics that are, where we're endlessly right. fighting it seems like it might be good to maybe put those on that yeah well, i'd love to have like it. a debate for yeah, where yeah, both sides I, I, I think that i think and i think, I think, think that the I think that the most important aspects are yeah. how do we follow the will of Yahweh? I agree. That's the most important. That thing. to me That's is the most important thing. And that has to be the unifying thread, in my opinion, in my opinion, no, of I, our I, scripture study. I, so on that point, I, I do agree with that and i think also as we get more unified of what yahweh's ways are it actually will take care of some of these sidetrack issues yeah, exactly. to be honest yes. and i've seen that He's... but anyways I, I do agree with that point. So, so, for, so for me so for me the thing is to let's keep the main thing the main thing and let's not let let's not let the other things keep us with the main thing which is following in the way so following in the footsteps of your sure yeah. sure. you guys want to have a yeah. closing prayer or something like that uh sure we can do that um I, i'll yeah. let me pause the recording